All right, welcome back to CADE tutorials on Revit 2012. In this tutorial, we're going to get into the basic edit commands. Uh, you can you can draw walls and doors and windows all day long, but if you can't edit anything, then you're not going to get very far in designing. So we're just going to move right into it with the move command. So, just like any other program, it's pretty one one of the basic commands. There's a couple of different ways to move in Revit. You can select an item, and if you hover over it, you'll see the cursor turns into little arrows. So I can grab a wall or a door for instance and I can just manually slide it up and down that wall and move it. That's one way to move. And of course this is attached to that wall so I won't be able to move it sideways because it's a wall based fixture. But for example a wall I can do the same thing and I can move it in and out. Now it is attached so again it's just going to let me go up and down. I can't go left and right with this particular wall but that's one way to move. The other way is to select the move command which is up here. And You can also use your keystroke but you can select the command first then the object and then hit the spacebar pick a point and then pick your new point and you can also do it backwards. I'll undo that. I can pick the object first then the command pick a point and then the new point. So that's the move command. It's pretty basic. Um, and I can move anything. I mean, I could uh, excuse my shortcut key. I can move this toilet, you know, out here. And another thing, just to keep in mind, whenever you're going to do anything, don't forget up here your options bar. Now, one of the reasons I can't move this toilet left or right, or I can move it left or up, I can't move it diagonally, because constrain is checked. So if I was to uncheck constrain, now it's free to move wherever I want. So I can move it way over here if I feel like it. When constrain is checked, that's basically like ortho for you AutoCAD users. You can only go one way or the other in line with the original object. Can't go diagonal, it won't let me. So that's something to keep in mind. And that's basically it. That's the move command. Pretty simple. One other thing about move is you can disjoin so what that means is for instance if I was to move this wall remember these walls are all joined by default because they are mitered so if I move this wall down it's going to stretch this wall is going to get bigger which 99% of the time is what you want well what if you didn't want that well you can hit your move command and disjoin now this wall is free to move without that wall coming with it so that's a couple of deals with the option bar now copy is basically just like move. If you think of move, it basically makes a copy of the wall and deletes the original. That's really what a move is. On a copy, it leaves the original. It's basically the only difference. So you can come in and copy, which happens to be that symbol right there. And I'm just using my keyboard shortcuts. And I can copy this wall down here. And again, I've got constrain. Disjoin is already checked by default. And I've got multiple. So I can constrain this wall to where it's only going to move here or there. I can't go diagonal with it. It won't let me. Or if I uncheck constrain, then I can put this wall anywhere I choose. And all multiple does is pretty self-explanatory. If you have multiple checked, you stay in the copy command and you can put in multiple objects. Now again, I just wanted to also point out that we are drawing this little house here. It's a very basic little drawing so there's not a lot of need for all these tools um, so I'm just going to show them to you just just the way I am it really doesn't have anything to do with the drawing so I just want to make that clear and again if you remember right when I want to select multiple things I'm just holding down my control key and I'm selecting that and that also goes with these basic move and copy commands if I wanted to copy this wall or I'm sorry yeah, copy or move this wall and this wall. I can just hold down the control key and select both of them. And then I can copy both of those walls down here. So you can use your selection techniques within these commands. So that's copy. Um, rotate is the next one. Now, of course, you can't rotate a door because it's, it's hosted on the wall. So rotate's going to be more for things that are not hosted, which would, let's say, this toilet. Say for instance I really want to put this toilet on this wall instead. Now of course we could always hit the space bar. Oh, actually I think it's not going to let me see. Space bar will flip it for me. 
So that's one way, but say I wanted to rotate it. And rotate has a, a special little caveat in, uh, in Revit, and I'll show it to you right now. This is rotate. I hit the rotate button. I've already got that selected. There you go. I can rotate. First you pick your first point. Then you pick your second point. Let's make it 180 degrees. And I can also just put it in the direction I want and type in 180. And it's going to rotate that 180 degrees. Now let's say for instance, I'll just move this uh, out here to show you this. Say I've got two things I want to rotate. So I pick both of these things and I hit rotate. If you notice it's always going to put the center of rotation in the center of the entire selection set. Sometimes you want that, sometimes you don't. Well what if I wanted to rotate off of this corner right here? How can I do that? Because right now it's going to rotate, you can see where it's rotating, right in the middle. So maybe I don't want that. So what do you do? Well, you can select this little dot, which is your center of rotation, and I can put it anywhere I want. It already de it defaults in the middle of the selection set, but if I want it on that corner, it'll snap to that corner. And if you notice, now I'm rotating about that corner. If I want to rotate about, you know, that midpoint of that toilet, I can pull it and snap it to the midpoint. Now that's what I'm rotating about. And that'll rotate the whole selection set around that point. So that's something to remember with rotate. Um, sometimes it's not the right point that you want, but it's no big deal. You can just, once you're in the command, you can move it to wherever you need to rotate around. So that's rotate. And I'm going to go ahead and move my toilet back to where it was. There's your rotate command. Pretty simple. Another command we have is array. I'll just grab my toilet again. Why not? It's easy to see. Array command is right there. And there's two types of arrays. There's a radial array and a linear array. So, first we're going to go, it's already defaults to um, linear. So, you get into the command, you select your object. Now, you pick it and there's two options here. As you're going up, you can either move to second or move to last. And of course you have your constraint again where if you want them to all be perpendicular like an ortho, I can hit constraint and now it's going to be directly in line no matter what I do or in line this way. So, move to second. I'll show you what that does. That makes this the second position and say I want them to be four feet apart. I can actually type in four feet now they're four feet apart and that's the second position. Okay. What that does is when I come in here with my array, and remember everything's parametric and it's a little bit hard to do an array, but if you can see this line, highlight that number. Say I want six of them. I can type in six. And what it does is it extends past, when you have it marked as second, it takes the distance between the first and the second and keeps that same distance for however many you say. So if you want six, it'll give you six of them. They all have four feet in between them. That's what the second command does. Let me just undo this. Yep, one too far. And we'll go to array, except this time, we're gonna put last. And as you could probably guess, what last does is, let me make this uh, 10 feet, just for illustration purposes. Now what last does is this last one will always be 10 feet away from the first one. And when you fill them in, what it's going to do is fill in the gap evenly. So if I want four toilets, let's say, it fills them in the middle. If I want this to be six toilets, it fills them in between the first and the last. That is, that is your dimension. So basically second, when you pick the second option, the distance is fixed between the first and the second item and every item after that. When you pick the last, option. The distance is fixed between the first and the last and the ones in the middle just fill in the gap. And they can even overlap. If I did 15, I think it should do it for me. See, they'll all overlap each other. Because I'm fitting 15 toilets in there evenly spaced. So there's array. And there's a lot of a lot of uses for array. And you can even do a double array. Like I could take this and let's just do that real quick. I can array it. Oops. Say I want two feet. You know what? I forgot to uncheck and go back to second. Let's start all over. 
So even I get confused sometimes. Okay, I'm gonna array that. So if I want it to be second. And this is go three feet, that's fine. And notice that this is already active. If you know you want eight of them, you can just go ahead and type it in right then and there. So I've got eight going horizontal or vertically, and then I can take that whole entire array and I can array it again horizontally. Say I want five feet in between them now. And I want eight that way. So now I've arrayed my array, so to speak. So, I mean, I'm using toilets here, but you can see if you were going to put desks or chairs or something in an auditorium, how easy that would be instead of copying each one. You just array it horizontally vertic or vertically and horizontally. Boom, you're done. So that is the array. That is the linear array. Now the other array, let's copy this toilet back out here, is my radial, which is right here on your bar. You can see radial, there's linear, there's radial. Oh, and group and associate, I forgot to tell you, if you noticed on my arrays, when I pick them, they're grouped. See, that's like this one big group. So that's what group and associate is, it automatically groups them together. If I uncheck that, they'd still be individual. So just keep that in mind too. Get rid of that array. And we'll do another array, so at this time we'll pick radial. Now with radial array, you can place the center of rotation, which is right there. I'm gonna go ahead and place it here, just to be just to be something different. And I want to move again to the second and the last with the same commands. You can either fill in the gap or you can put one after the other to a specific distance. And number, I've got it three. So if I go from here and I want my angle to be let's say 41 degrees. There's one, two, three toilets all wrapped around that one point. I can make it I can make it five if I want. And there's five. They've all radial arrayed around that one center point. That's basically it. That's radial array. Um, pretty quick, pretty easy. See after array, let's do a mirror. Mirror commands pretty self-explanatory. If I want to copy this wall and have it the same distance from this reference plane except have the wall over here. It's real simple. It's two foot two and a quarter away. There's two types of mirrors. There is... Oh, that's my split element. I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong command. There's a pick axis mirror and there's a draw axis mirror. In this particular situation, I would just pick that axis line. Boom, it mirrors it on the other side of it. That is the mirror point. And I can do the same thing over here. I can do that and mirror it off of this line. I can mirror it off of this door. I mean this wall. I can mirror it off of this door. Anywhere that you can pick, you can mirror it. Say I wanted to mirror it off of, uh, let's see. I'm trying to think of something different here. Let's just mirror it this way. So there it is. Now the other way to do it, if you don't have a line and you know the mirror that you want, say I want to mirror it off of this end point of this door. Well, sometimes that's a little hard, tricky to do when it's such a small, small thing to pick. So I could maybe try to get in there and zoom in and, and find it, which will, which will work. Or I can just draw a line. Well, there's my mirror line. I'm actually, it's the same exact thing as pick axis, it's just I'm drawing the line in instead. And it's just a temporary line. You notice it's not there actually. So if I just wanted this to be, you know, out here, well, now it's mirrored off the point that I drew. Now that comes in handy too. Say if I had, um, say if I want to make this, let me just drag this wall out here. Show you why you would, if I didn't have a reference plane. Yes, I'm join elements. Now I put it in reverse. I'll just draw another wall right here real quick. Say I wanted this wall to mirror up at the exact same length. I could draw the wall and measure it. But if I just did a mirror line and picked here and went 45 degrees, there's that wall right there. So no need to draw a line. You can just, you're just doing it all yourself real quick like. So that takes us through the mirror command. Uh, in the next video, I'll start with the align command. 
that's a very and the split command now a line you're going to use a lot I mean and when you get into family creation you're going to use a line probably the most out of any tool any any modified tool so thanks for joining us and uh, see you in the next tutorial thank you